G'day folks, welcome back to another episode of the Engine Shed. Uh, today, as promised, I thought I'd deliver a video that's long overdue and long been in the works. And I thought I'd discuss 3D printers and how you can use them for your model railway. So, that and more to come, just in a second. Okay, so 3D printers. Interesting. Very interesting. And a lot of people probably think that they're a little inaccessible. Well, today I'm here to prove to you that that's honestly not the case. And 3D printing is a very interesting technology. It's relatively... Well, it's not relatively new. It's been around for about 15, 20 years. But in the consumer market, a lot of 3D printers that you can buy as kits are probably at about the adolescent stage of their development. The good news for you is that they're relatively cheap and they're relatively easy to use. And today I'll break it down and how it works and what you need to look out for and some recommendations and just exactly what you can do with this technology for your model railway. So before I do that, it's probably important to discuss the two types of 3D printer. Now, the two types of 3D printer that exist on the market currently are one is FDM. FDM stands for Fused Deposition Modeling. Now, fused deposition modeling is the most common type of 3D printer. It's also the cheapest and easiest to use type of 3D printer. Um, I'll talk about that one in just a second. The other type is SLA, which stands for stereolithography. Stereolithography is essentially the same practice, except in application of a 3D printer, instead of using, say, a plastic filament, an SLA printer will use a resin. And Instead of using a hot end, an SLA printer will use a laser to cure the resin as the build plate moves up. Really, really interesting stuff. I highly recommend you check out some really cool videos on that. SLA is very expensive because resin is very expensive. It's also a very messy process. So at this stage of the making of this video, at least anyway, SLA printers are probably not the best option for anyone looking to invest in a 3D printer for their model railway. That's still a very commercial grade application at this stage. Uh, SLA printers can run you into the very, very expensive hundreds of dollars for the smallest of the th SLA type printers and thousands to hundreds of thousands for the commercial grade 3D printers. Uh, FDM on the other hand, it's a relatively accessible technology and it's very, very cheap. And the application and variety of 3D printers that you can pick up online are extensive. And I have two examples here in my shed that I'll talk about in just a little bit. Um, but of course, being the fact that I use two FTM printers, I'm just going to be talking about FTM today and the things that you should uh, need to know and the things that you should look out for. And also make a couple of recommendations on the sort of printers you should be buying if you want to give this awesome technology slash hobby slash <laughs> money pit a go. So let's get cracking. So as I mentioned before, FDM printers are the most accessible type of 3D printer on the market currently. They're also among the cheapest that you can buy. The fundamental principle of an FDM printer is pretty basic. You use a plastic filament and that plastic filament is extruded through a hot end, a hot nozzle that's about 0.4 millimeters in diameter. So that's 400 microns for those of you that don't know. Our human hair is, I think, 10 microns thick. I believe 60 microns, 10 to 60 microns thick, I'm not 100% sure, but the point we're trying to make is that 0.4 of a millimeter is pretty thin. Now the general premise of an FDM printer is pretty simple. The hot plastic goes through a nozzle and it's printed onto a flat surface and the printer head will just move across and slowly build up an object on a Cartesian plane. And I'll show you some examples in just a moment, I promise, and you'll get to see some action of the 3D printer doing what it does best. But overall, the whole process is pretty effective and you can get some really good quality results out of it. So let's talk about filament. So filament is the essential part of any FDM 3D printer. Now, the two primary types of filament that you can buy for an FDM printer are PLA and ABS. The difference between the two is relatively minute in the terms of how you can use them to make your particular models. Um, PLA is probably the most widely available type of material and therefore is the cheapest of them all. Uh, ABS, which is the same material that Lego bricks are made out of, uh, it's equally as good but it's also more durable in natural sunlight 
and environmental conditions more so than PLA. Given that most people, if you're watching this video, are probably looking at buying a 3D printer for a model railway, PLA is perfectly acceptable as a material to use for your 3D printer. Now, as with most 3D printers, the most common type of filament is 1.75 millimeter diameter filament. And you can get this stuff in any sort of color you want. I've got some fluorescent green stuff here. It comes in a roll that looks just like this. You can get white, gold, pink, fluoro blue, oh, name it. There's probably a color for it. So anyway, you get a one kilo roll. That's the standard size of roll that you get. This will last you a long bloody time. You can go through quite a substantial amount of prints before you need to get a couple of rolls. Typically speaking, if I'm speaking to somebody about getting a 3D printer, when you buy a 3D printer, some people, if they're generous, will chuck in a roll of 3D filament as a starting bonus pack. Those are the sort of deals you want to look for because the roll of filament Though it's not inexpensive, it can run you in the cost of $30 to $40 for the, for the basic stuff. And you can pick those up on any electronic store, any e-store, like eBay, Amazon. Not very difficult to find at all. So PLA is cheap, it's very easy to access, and it's my recommendation for the material to be used for a 3D printer. And the next part we should talk about is the actual 3D printers themselves. Now for me, I have two 3D printers. One is the Anat A8 and the other is the TiVo Black Widow. And I'll leave links for both of those products down below that you can check them out. Um, <coughs> but let's start with the Anat A8. Okay, so I'm over here with my Anat A8. This is possibly my favourite budget 3D printer. It's widely regarded on the in the 3D printing community as one of the better beginner 3D printers and still is possibly one of the most capable 3D printers on the market for the cost. Uh, it's a very basic construction. It's got a th uh, acrylic frame. You can see the trial panel up here. The stepper motors here that control the hot end. The hot end here is tiny. It's about the size of a ballpoint pen and that's essentially the point. And for those of you still struggling to con understand the concept of a 3D printer, if you were to trace a drawing onto an A4 sheet of paper of, say, your hand, right? You trace your hand onto that sheet of paper, like so, in an XY fashion. All a 3D printer does is essentially the same thing, but it adds a third dimension in the Z axis. So it will slowly trace over an area, fill it with plastic, and it will eventually give you the 3D shape that you want, which could be a hand, it could be a model of a phone booth, it could be anything. The applications are effectively limitless, but there are some considerations that you will need to take into account, and I will talk about those in just a second. But if you're looking to get into the 3D printing game, this is probably the printer I would recommend any beginner starts with. You can pick this particular printer up on Amazon for like 150 Australian dollars. I think it's relatively about the same wherever you are. It's about 100 to 120 pounds sterling, maybe about the same 100 to 130 dollars as US Canadian basic premise is this is not going to cost you more than 150 dollars and for the money it is one of it is still one of the best 3d printers I've ever used uh, very cheap very easy to get parts for this thing because there's an absolute abundance of them um, and of course I don't need to detail too much more on this there's plenty of videos on this particular 3d printer online um, if you do want to do your homework I recommend starting with this one. It's always a good place to go. Okay, so this 3D printer right beside me here is my TiVo Black Widow. Now this is the workhorse 3D printer. I've only got two of them, but this is by far the one I use the most. Now, not to say that I don't love using the Anet A8. It is a great little printer. It's a quick little printer, but given that it's got such a small build size, I only tend to use it for really high detail parts or really small parts that I only need, like um, a coach bogey, which I'll show you in just a minute. But this particular one is enormous. It has got a 280 by 240 by 250 big. This is the size of an A4 sheet of paper and you've got about 250 mils in the Z-axis. So there is not a whole lot you can't print on this particular 3D printer. Um, in fact, one of the things I originally wanted to try when I first bought this printer was printing my own coaches. And I successfully did that to an extent, but <laughs> as you can probably tell, in the next couple of videos that I'll do. Actually, no, I'll show you in this video. Uh, the quality is questionable. 
and well at the best of times it's a 50-50 chance that it's going to work. So this particular 3D printer is very expensive compared to the Anet A8. This one cost me about 600 Australian dollars. Um, and that being said, it is probably the far better build quality. All these channels are open source channels. They're made of aluminium extrusions. Rock solid, this thing. The bed is also heated and it's also better regulated than the Anet A8. This control box here has got a very good power supply and power regulation in it. So you don't really have to worry about it being a fire or electrical hazard. Um, now, the hot end. The hot end is a direct feed hot end. You can see the stepper motor here. We've got two cooling fans on either side. Now the cooling fans basically help cure the plastic quicker and makes it harder so that the print as it goes up higher becomes more stable. That's the essential purpose of using a cooling fan on a 3D printer. Now again, for the sake of this video, I don't want to go too much into the specifics of a 3D printer because if I did that, it'd probably be an hour and a half long video. So I'm just going to keep myself in check. If you do want to go and look at more stuff, there are some channels that I will recommend that you can go and have a look at to learn more about this awesome technology. But for now, let's just focus on the basics. So cooling fans, this right here is the hot end. Again, it's about the size of a biro tip or a ballpoint pen. This particular hot end is an E3D V6 hot end and it's possibly regarded as one of the best hot ends on the market for an FDM printer. I've had it for about three months now and I can only recommend it as highly as everybody else has. It is a fantastic piece of kit and it has produced some really good prints. Uh, the factory hot ends are good but they tend to develop problems within 12 months or thereabouts like mine did and that's pretty common because these Machines are made in China. They are not imitations, but they are not the best quality. There are better printers made on the market that can cost you thousands of dollars, like the Ultimaker Pros and etc. Uh, etc. Et but for the hobby, for the money, you can't go wrong with something like this. If you have the money for it, by all means, I recommend it. But if you are just starting out, like I once did, the Anet A8 is the better option. When you eventually progress up and your competency in 3D printing gets better, then you can go for something like this. Now, with that being said, um, I'll show you some videos of what's being made on this. I'll show you some of the stuff that I've made and let's check it out. Okay, so now that we've talked about some, some of the 3D printers that I use, it's probably about time that I showed you some of the 3D prints. And the regular viewers have probably known about this for a while, but anyone watching the channel for the first time, uh, one of the very first prints that I actually conducted on the Anet A8, which was my first printer, and it was the cheapest of the three print two printers, I should say, was this thing right here. Tiny little stone gazebo. Now this little thing is incredibly detailed. It took about five to six hours to print, used about 30 to 40 grams of plastic. Now considering what I said before, you get a kilogram roll. A kilogram roll. That's a thousand grams. That's how much plastic you would use. So you can understand and appreciate what I mean by saying that one roll is going to last you a long time. So colour isn't really necessary if you're going to paint it like I have done here because the plastic I used for that was fluoro green. And I've just covered this in a fairly simple grey primer. But you can probably see and tell the detail is actually quite good. So the roof detail, the vents, the guttering, it all looks pretty spectacular. And steps. And eventually I hope to include this into the layout at some point, paint it up, make it look like it's a genuine thing, and go from there. So this is just an example of one of the coaches that I printed for the Eurostar. Now Eurostar, of course, is notorious for having missing coaches like this central saloon car you can see that the piping on the roof has all been fairly well replicated and I've just made up my own coupling system and created a fairly accurate representation of what that coach could look like now there's no glazing of course I'm gonna to have to work on putting some glazing in but again it goes back to the fact that if you were to paint that up you probably couldn't tell that this was a 3d printed coach and I don't think the most keen observer would even know that it was a 3D printed coach if it was painted properly. So to the extent of what is capable with a 3D printer, you can, if you do it right, print your own 3D printed coach. 
Now the next thing I want to show you is something a little bit more adventurous and it's something that you will require a bigger 3D printer for, but something that you could print on the ANET A8 if you really wanted to. Um, one of the things that I was looking at recently when I was building my station area was uh, a station canopy and it's something that's a nice centerpiece for anybody that has a big station like I do. It's just a nice big canopy that looks like it's a big thermos. Always wanted one. so started looking at some options. You can of course get the Pico option and the Hornby option. Both are relatively the same. They don't really offer any distinct difference in detail or size. But then I saw how much they cost and I nearly fell over. Couldn't believe that it cost 20 to 5 to 30 pounds for a station canopy. So I said, no, that's not happening because by the time I got six of them, which I would need to cover the area of my platform, I'd be 150 pounds down the toilet. No thank you. Uh, so I thought bugger that I'm gonna make my own and that's exactly what I've done. And you can see here this is a 3D printed station canopy. Now it's rock solid this thing you could throw this against the wall and it would bounce off like a tennis ball it won't break as easily as people probably think. So you can be quite rough with this Whereas if you were doing the same thing with the pre-bought model, you probably couldn't do that at all. It would break as soon as you tried putting any force on it. So the arch, very, very simple. Just designed that up in a 3D CAD program and printed it off. And I'll show you the time-lapse in just a second. But the other cool thing that you can do is you can print the supporting legs. Just these tiny little columns that hold up the, the canopy like so. Again, Print it on a 3D printer. You don't need anything fancy, you don't need anything substantial, you can just do it with your own 3D printer. So, now what I'll do, I'll show you the time-lapse photography from the TiVo Black Widow, where I printed this, and uh, we'll take it from there. So stay tuned. Okay guys, so just to wrap up, uh, that time-lapse photography was pretty cool. It was also the best time-lapse photography I had. Um, the problem with filming anything 3D printing is that it is a very time-consuming process. It can take 10 to 12 hours for a big print like the canopy to happen. Um, I'm trying to optimize that down to about half that time. So that's still a work in progress. But um, anyway, hopefully this video has given you an idea of the capability of 3D printing and hopefully it's encouraged you to at least explore the idea that 3D printing is an option for you and for your layout. As I said, you can pick up a relatively inexpensive and capable 3D printer like the Anet A8 uh, for next to nothing. Um, and go from there. It's a very, very interesting set of technology that you can get involved with and hopefully um, you've learned something from me today. By no means am I an expert, but you know, uh, given the context of the video, I think that I've covered the basics at the very least. Um, if there is any desire for me to talk about 3D printers in more depth, of course you can leave me a comment in this comment section below and let me know if that's something you want to see. But uh, outside of that, I will leave some links in the description for everybody to check out. Uh, all the websites that I use and the software that I can 
provide to you for you to have a go at designing your own particular types of 3D models. Um, outside of that, um, with a big thank you to all my subscribers and all my new subscribers, you guys are fantastic. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, that's where I'm going to wrap up this video. So thank you very much again for tuning in and we'll catch you in the next one. Happy model railroading, guys.